Hi, welcome to my channel, The Magic of Math, where we will master math one video at a time. Today, our lesson is on solving simple equations. Our objectives today are that you, the student, will solve one step equations using addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. And I will say that this is a review lesson for my grade eight students. It's something that it is expected that you will have learned in seventh grade, probably even introduced to in sixth grade, and we build upon it in eighth grade. So making sure that we understand vocabulary and all the inverse operations to solving one-step equations. So keeping going, this is what I want you to think about today before you approach every single problem. What are inverse operations and what do they mean to you? So the vocabulary that I'll be using and you need to be able to be familiar and recognize. Variable, a variable is a symbol that represents one or more numbers. An equation, which is a statement that two expressions are equal. So you remember you can have a variable expression or you can have a mathematical expression. Solution is a value that makes an equation true. So we're gonna find solutions and check solutions today. And then we have equivalent equations. And these are equations that have the same solutions. Inverse operations are two operations that undo each other and a zero pair are two numbers whose sum is zero. So let's talk about inverse operations first. Remember these are mathematical operations that undo each other. So when we talk about addition, addition is undone by subtraction and vice versa. Subtraction is also undone by addition. They are opposite operations, think about that. We form opposites when we do the inverse. So let's talk about properties of equality that are gonna help us with these inverse operations to solve equations. The addition property of equality states that adding the same number to each side of an equation produces an equivalent equation. So what that means to you is that if you add the same number to each side of an equation, so each side of the equal sign, you are not changing the value of the equation because you've kept the balance. You've done the same exact thing to both sides. And in algebra, that works. So here we have an equation, x subtract three is equal to four. So this is an equation, we have an algebraic expression equal to a mathematical expression. So this is a statement of equality. This equals this, forming an equation. We want to solve for x. So I need to identify what is happening to x. x is being subtracted by three. And back to our question of the lesson, what, how can inverse operations help me? So I wanna think about what's the inverse operation of subtracting three? Well, we learned that the inverse of subtracting is addition. So subtraction is undone by addition. So we're going to add three to both sides, keeping the balance. So this becomes opposites, which form a zero pair that's equal to zero. So that leaves me just X on the left side and I add four plus three and I get seven. And just to ensure that I did everything correctly, I'm going to check my work. I love this unit of study for all my students because they can always check. They don't need to wonder or have me correct it. They know if they check. Let's see if we did it correctly. We're going to replace 7 in the X with 7 because that's our solution. This is our solution. And it, we're going to replace X with our solution to check. So 7 subtract three needs to equal four, and indeed it does. So it checks. Now let's talk about a different property of equality. It's called the subtraction property of equality. And as you could probably guess, it states that subtracting the same number from each side of an equation produces an equivalent equation. So here's an equation. 
x plus 6 equals 11. So we identify what is happening to x. x is being added by 6. And now we need to do the inverse of add 6, and we know that subtraction undoes addition. So the inverse would be to subtract 6 from both sides, giving me opposite, which form a zero pair, and I'm left with just x is equal to 11 minus 6, which is 5. But let's check to see if we did it correctly. I'm going to replace x with 5. So 5 plus 6 needs to equal 11 if I did this correctly. 5 plus 6 is indeed 11. It checks. Your turn. Please pause the video here, solve, check your work, and come back when you're ready. Welcome back. So we are going to identify what is happening to x. It's being added by 8. The inverse of add 8 is to subtract 8 from both sides, leaving me x, my zero pair, x is equal to 15 minus 8, which is 7. Let's check. Replacing x with 7. 7 plus 8 is 15. 15 equals 15, and it checks. Here's another one. Please pause, solve, don't forget to check your solution, and come back when you're done. Welcome back. So we identify what is happening to the x, which is subtract 11. The inverse of subtract is to add 11 to both sides, giving me my zero pair. So x is equal to 27 plus 11, which is 38. Let's check. We're going to replace x with 38. 38 subtract 11 is 27. It checks. Now we're going to talk about a few more mathematical operations that undo each other. We have multiplication and division. Multiplication undoes division. These are inverse operations. So we have another property, the multiplication property of equality, stating that multiplying the same number to each side of an equation will produce an equivalent equation. So here's our equation. x divided by 7 is equal to 9. The inverse of divide by 7, the inverse of division, is multiplication. So we're going to multiply both sides by 7 to undo divide by 7. When I do this, 7 times over 7 is 1. So this is 1, and x and 1x are the same. 9 times 7 is 63. So now we check. We replace x with 63. 63 divided by 7 is 9, and it checks. The division property of equality states that dividing the same number from each side of an equation produces an equivalent equation. So we have an equation 5x equals 30, and we identify that we have 5 multiplied by x. Multiplication is undone by division. That's the inverse. So to divide both sides by 5 would undo multiply by 5. 5 divided by 5 is 1. 30 divided by 5 is 6. So notice, let's check first and then I'll mention something. 5 times x, 5 times 6 is 30, and it checks. So notice when you are using inverse operations of add and subtract, we're looking to form a zero pair with opposites. When we undo multiplication and division, we're looking to make the coefficient of x. Right here, the coefficient is 5. Right here, the coefficient is 1. It's invisible. So when we are undoing with multiplication and division, we're trying to identify how to make the coefficient 1. When you add and subtract, you're looking to form that the opposites, the zero pair. All right, your turn. Pause, solve, check your solution, and then come back. Welcome back. I first identify that x is being divided by 7. The inverse of divide by 7 is to multiply both sides by 7. 
that gives me x is equal to 3 times 7, which is 21. We're going to check. We're going to replace x with our solution of 21. 21 divided by 7 is 3, and it checks. Your turn again. Solve, check, and then come back. Welcome back. So first I'm looking at what I have here with my variable term, and I have 3 multiplied by x. The inverse of multiply by 3 is to divide both sides by 3. 3x divided by 3 is x, or 1x. 81 divided by 3 is 27. So let's check. We're going to replace x with 27. So 3 multiplied by 27 is 81, and it checks. Once in a while, we see symbols in algebraic equations. So here we have pi, which is a mathematical symbol that represents a number. It represents an irrational number that never terminates. So if we use the symbol rather than 3.14, it's more exact. So here we have pi times x is equal to 18 times pi. Noting that this pi is no different than having 2x or 10x or 1 half x, it represents a number. It's a symbol that represents an exact number, whereas x is a variable that can vary. x could be different things depending on the equation it's in, but pi is always equivalent to 3.14 blah 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 blah. If you use your calculator, you can extend that out, but it will never end. So we're going to solve this and undo multiply by pi by dividing both sides by pi. That leaves me x because pi divided by pi, anything divided by itself is 1, and 18 pi divided by pi is 18. I can check this because I can replace x with 18. Pi times 18 is equivalent to 18 pi, commutative property of multiplication, and it checks. So beware, if you see a symbol like this, like pi, it just represents a number. Your turn. Go ahead and solve, check, and come back when you're done. Please pause. Welcome back. So I'm identifying what is happening to x. x is being added by pi. So the inverse of add pi is to subtract pi from both sides. This gives me my zero pair leaving me just x, and 3 pi subtract pi is 2 pi. Think of it as pies. If you have 3 pies and you take 1 pi away, you'll have 2 pies remaining. We can check our work by replacing x with our solution of 2 pi, and pi plus 2 pi is 3 pi. So think of it. There's 1 pi, 2 pies, for a total of 3 pies, and it checks. We can also solve equations using the reciprocal. So here I'm going to identify that x is being multiplied by negative 2 thirds. Even though the inverse of multiply is to divide, remember back to dividing fractions. You may have learned something like keep, change, flip, which means you're going to multiply by the reciprocal. So when solving an algebraic equation, we've now practiced dividing by fractions so often, we know that multiplying by the reciprocal is the same as dividing. So we're going to multiply both sides of this equation by the reciprocal, and the reciprocal has the same sign, and then you flip it. Negative 2 thirds is negative 3 halves. And when you multiply a value by its reciprocal, the product will be 1. So this is equal to 1. So I have x is equal to, and I just need to do this multiplication, a negative multiplied by a negative is a positive. 4 divided by 2 is 2 times 3 is 6. Or you could do 4 times 3 is 12 divided by 2 is 6. Now we can check. Negative 2 thirds times x, our solution is 6. 6 divided by 3 is 2. Negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. It checks. Or 6 times 2 is 12, divide by 3, negative 4. Your turn. 
go ahead and pause, solve, check, and then come back. Welcome back. I hope you multiplied both sides by the reciprocal. The reciprocal of one half is two over one or two. Two times one half is one. Negative nine times two is negative 18. Let's check. We're gonna replace x with negative 18. One half of negative 18 is negative nine and it checks. Okay, let's wrap up this by some student practice. I'd like you to solve both of these. Go ahead, pause, solve, check, and return when you're done. Welcome back. So my variable is y, and I need to add 4y to both sides to create my zero pair. The inverse of add negative 4y, I mean to subtract 4y is to add 4y. This becomes zero, so I have y equals five pi plus four pi, which is nine pi. Let's check. Negative four pi plus our solution nine y is indeed positive five pi, and it checks. My solution is y equals nine pi. In your second problem, you have 17 times x. The inverse of multiply is to divide. We're gonna divide both sides by 17, Zero divided by any value is zero, and now we can check. 17 times our solution zero is indeed zero, and it checks our solution is x equals zero. Here's two more. Go ahead and pause, solve, check, and come back. Welcome back. I hope you identified that this was multiply, but it's a fraction, so we're going to multiply by the reciprocal, which is the same as divide by the negative one-fifth. So the reciprocal of negative one-fifth is negative five. Remember your reciprocal will have the same sign. Reciprocal, when you multiply, is one. Negative four times negative five is 20. Let's check our solution. Negative one-fifth times 20 so 20 divided by 5 is 4, and it's negative. A negative multiplied by a positive is a negative. So our solution is z equals 20. Your second equation, it was t being added by 3. So the inverse is to subtract 3 from both sides. So t is equal to negative 17. Oh, sorry, negative 16. Let's go back and check. We're gonna replace t with negative 16. Three plus negative 16 is negative 13, and it checks. So our solution is t equals negative 16. And these are the last two problems I have for you in this lesson. Go ahead and pause, solve, check, and come back. Welcome back. So the inverse of subtract 14 is to add 14 to both sides, leaving me s is equal to negative 26, add 14 is negative 12. Let's check, negative 12 subtract 14. Remember, I add the opposite. So negative 12 add negative 14 is negative 26. It checks for a solution of s equals negative 12. And our last problem today, b divided by four. The inverse of divide by four is to multiply both sides by four. So b is equal to negative 13 times four is negative 52. Replace b with negative 52. Negative 52 divided by four is th negative 13. And it checks, so we have a solution of b equals negative 52. So that's our lesson today on solving simple equations. I hope that provided an excellent review for you and you feel ready to go on to our next lesson of multi-step equations. I hope you'll come back and join me soon. Please subscribe to my channel. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it or leave me a comment and register to receive notifications. I hope you have a great day.